my bathroom. This is episode five of the haircutting series. We're going to be doing a zero degree square one length or blunt haircut. If you're joining me from school, it's page 404 in this Milady book. Don't forget if you don't have this book or not in school, whatever, it doesn't matter. There's free printables or guides on my website. I'll link it in the description box below so you can follow along this series. All right, so before we start chopping, make sure you subscribe, like, click the bells buttons. I'm here for you every single week on Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern time. I am going to be cutting very similar to how this book is showing you, but I do want to note that there are a lot of different techniques or ways to do this haircut and they're all fine. Barbara here is in four quads. If you need a refresher on how to section, it's in episode two. When we're cutting hair, it's either all wet or all dry. So we're gonna make sure she's in even saturation. We're gonna make our first parting line starting at the occipital bone. Occipital bone! It's where the head is protruding outward. Bing! I'm gonna take the wide part of my comb, I'm gonna put my finger where I want it to land, and I'm gonna make a diagonal forward line. It looks like this. It's a diagonal line pushing forward. You will see some people cutting with a straight horizontal line. Most of the time that is actually how I prefer to cut it. But again, we're following your book and it's showing a diagonal forward line. We're going to end up cutting horizontal, so it doesn't really matter. You're going to get the same result. The only reasoning to slightly angle it is because the head is moving round and the head is not square. We're going to match it on this other side. So putting my finger where I want it to land, Bing! Now, depending on the density or how thick or thin your client's hair is or your mannequin, you may need to make this a little bit smaller. I'm gonna tilt her head slightly forward. From a side point of view, it's going to look like this. My shoulders are back, my feet are on the floor, I'm relaxed, and I'm cutting at heart level. Comb through, make sure there's no tangles, snags, and I'm gonna let it fall to its natural falling position. This is where the hair wants to live. We're gonna start in the middle and we're gonna make our very first cut or our guide. Take the comb and we're gonna figure out where that length is going to be. For me, it's going to be right here and I'm going to cut, cut. This cut is going to determine this whole haircut. So at this point, this is where you would get with your client and make sure it's short enough. Now we're just gonna play connect the dots. We're doing a straight line. But what we're not doing is combing the hair over here. The hair lives here. So we're moving with the head, combing with the fine teeth, and I'm going in and cut, cut. When I'm cutting, I'm only using the tip of my shear. Just the tip, ladies. Eventually, we'll start to use the belly or the inside of the shear, but for this haircut, just this part. If we use the full thing, it's going to push the hair and create a different shape. We're going for a zero degree, very blunt cut. Playing connect the dots. When you're cutting this, the comb is parallel to the floor. My shears are parallel to the floor. Cutting angle, cutting position parallel to the floor. My line is horizontal, parallel to the floor. Here I go, combing everything to make sure it's even. And I cut, 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 recomb. Cutting against the nape of the neck. You're not going to cut her. And when you're cutting, you should be directly in front. I'm standing to the side so you can get a clear point of view. So mine may be a little, We'll do our best to make it straight, but you're standing directly in front of what you're cutting. You're not off to the side because if your body shifted, you're going to get a shifted line. You may see some people cut this with their fingers and that's okay. I agree with your book on using your comb for this haircut to get the most precision because if you look at your fingers, I hope I can explain this right, but your fingers are wider at the base and then they get skinny, kind of like a carrot. When you grasp hair, you have a tighter grip here and a looser grip here because you see that gap. So it's actually not a true horizontal line. Your comb is straight. So when you cut against it, it's straight. Also your fingers, you have a tendency to bend. I cannot get as close to her nape as I could with my comb. I'm gonna move her to the side so you can see. We're gonna comb the hair to where it lives. Whoop. And I'm connecting the dots. Okay, now I'm gonna square up with my client. Shoulders back, feet on the floor, and I'm gonna check for balance by taking two of these sides and feeling if they feel even. Now I'm going to visually look and see if that looks even. There's a piece of hair right there and right there. Now I'm going to take a subsection of hair, very thin. I need to be able to see what I just cut under it. Match the other side. We're also elevating up the head 
So I'm gonna move her up just a little bit, making sure she's evenly wet, comb straight down, make sure there's no tangles, snags. This is where the hair lives. We don't want to move it like this and start cutting because we've taken it out of its home. We're cutting where it lives. You can start on the side or start back at the middle. That's where I'm gonna start, back at the middle. There's my guide, do you see that? I'm not cutting above it or below it, but I'm cutting right at it. Just using the tip of my shears. Using my shear to make sure I've got all the hair in there. Bing, bing. Now we're adding more hair in at the side. See this? Where does it live? Not back here. That's a totally different haircut. That's gonna save length. It lives right here. I'm going to match the other side. Okay, I'm just gonna do a quick comb through. Is this even? Is it a straight line? I'll refine it at the end, but it's easier to correct a mistake during and not after. Now we're gonna move her head up. For our next section, we're just gonna do horizontal. Just like that, because the head is changing shape. And we're going to add in this side. It's going to flow, bing. We're gonna play connect the dots, Wee. Ooh, that was bad, hang on, woo. We're gonna do this all the way around. It's going to look like a giant horseshoe parting. Connecting it over here. Wide tooth portion of the comb. Combing this to let it fall. Where does the hair wanna live? Because remember, we don't wanna move this. I'm gonna start in the middle again. Our clients, our people, they have ears. Our mannequins don't really have that much of a, is it a protrusion, is that the word? I don't know, protrudes outward, the ear. We have to remember that people have ears. If you go through and cut right here, especially holding this really tight, maximum tension and cut, what's gonna happen when you release your cut is you're gonna have a big hole because you didn't allow for them having ears. That's why we're using the wide tooth of the comb. Less tension. When I get to this part where this ear lives, I'm gonna take my shears and they're gonna be closed. And I'm gonna take it under the hair and I'm gonna bing, bing. That's a very dramatic version. But just bing, bing, releasing the tension, creating space for an ear. Releasing tension, bing, connecting the dots. Should be cutting backhanded again, but because I am trying to give you the best point of view. I'm cutting this way. Here we go, there's the ear, bing, bing. Now we're gonna move on to the other side. You don't wanna complete this whole side because you wanna make sure this one's going to be even. As long as this is even, this will be even and match this other side. Wide teeth of the comb. Cutting straight, here's the ear, bing, bing, bing. Just using the tip of my shear parallel to the floor. Everything's at zero degrees, not up here, not down here, not with my fingers where it's easy to see, making sure it's wet. Bing. Releasing the tension. Bing, bing, bing. Now I'm gonna check for balance. This one feels a little bit longer, so I'm just gonna go through and kind of see. And yes, I left a little bit longer in the front. You can't really tell by looking because look, look at her hair. She has a curl pattern. It's not much, but it's still like it's moving outwards. So we need to feel, how does this feel? And again, you have to make sure this is even because you're gonna screw up the whole haircut if you just continue on with this one being out of whack. In a salon setting, I would use the mirror to my advantage. She would be in front and I would be looking in the mirror. Also real quick, cause I'm thinking about it. If you're using a mannequin stand, they're wobbly. So a good little hack is to use ankle weights. Ankle weights will help keep her still. These things can be kind of junky. Now we're gonna continue on. Thin horizontal subsection. I need to be able to see my guide through this. I'm gonna combine these two sections together. We're going around the head, making a horseshoe subsection. You should be able to see your guide. And notice how my shears are not leaving my hand. Even while I'm sectioning, I'm palming them. They're always with me. We're not setting them down, putting them in our pocket, whatever. We always have them. Now again, you can start kind of wherever you want. In the middle, on the side, or on the side. I like to just keep it where we were, in the middle. I'm gonna comb it where it lives, because she does have a curl pattern. Not gonna move it and make it live here, because it doesn't. When she blow dries it at home, she's gonna be upset with my comb, cut, 
cut, cut. And I'm moving with this haircut. I'm not staying back here. I'm moving with my client. That's why you need to wear comfortable shoes. Some of y'all wearing heels and stuff. We're getting towards the ear. Can you see it? No. Wide tooth of the comb. Bing, bing, bing. Cut, cut, cut. Again by the ear. Bing, bing, bing. Cut. Now I'm at the front where there are no ears. Cut, cut, cut. Left out a piece. Boom. Now I'm gonna go through with my fingers and make sure, are there any stragglers? If so, I'm just gonna chop that off. Here we go. Same thing. Again, horizontal, parallel to the floor. Horizontal, cutting horizontal, horizontal line. Okay, by the ear. Checking for balance. Are these even? Oop, there's a piece. When we get to the top, this is where we decide where the part line is. How do you part your hair? Let me move her down for a minute. A middle part like she has right now, you could do that. If they always, whoopsie, what are you doing? If they always part their hair to a certain side, like the right or the left, then you're gonna part it to that side. If they don't have a preference, you're gonna cut it to the natural fall. How you find that is combing the hair all the way back. Slick it back like this. Wee! Take your hand and you're gonna do this. Where is her hair naturally, naturally falling? Now this is a mannequin, so it's probably gonna be, is it the middle? Yeah. That's where I would cut her hair too. But if she says, I always wanna wear it to the right, then make her a parting and confirm with her that this is where you're always gonna style your hair. Because if not, it's gonna be a little wonky. For her, we're gonna go back to the middle. Is that even? I feel like that wasn't even. Now, depending on the density of your client's hair, that's how many sections you're going to need. This mannequin has straggly ends, very thin, so we don't have to do a whole lot of sectioning. Combing this down, where does this naturally fall due to gravity? Got it? I'm starting in the back again, making sure she's straight. She looks a little lopsided. Combing, combing, combing. This is where the hair falls. Phew! And I'm cutting. Cut, cut, cut. Moving with my haircut moving, I'm at the ear, so I'm gonna ping, ping, ping. We've added a whole lot of hair. Make sure you're combing this where the hair lives. If you comb it back, you are saving the length and making a graduation. Very pretty cut, but for what we're trying to do today, that's not what we're doing. So combing it, where is gravity hitting it? Wide teeth of the comb. <laughs> Cut. I'm gonna go in, if I see anything that needs to be refined, I'm going to refine it. Mirror the other side. Now what I'm going to do is clean up my hair and then I'm going to do a basic blowout straight, blow it out real straight. And I'm going to check it. Then you can go through and curl it, style it, whatever you wanna do. But we're not curling and twirling until we make sure that this basic shape is pretty close to perfect. Nothing's perfect, but oopsie, I just saw something. Nothing's perfect, but we wanna try to get it as close as possible. Now we can see where there's a couple imperfections where it's not a totally straight, blunt line. So I'm gonna go through and just kind of comb and see where I can get these little stragglies. Make sure her head is straight. You could leave it like this, but it is heavy on the corner. If you look at her from this angle, like really take a look at this. When we just take this corner out and you see all this weight, how much better that looks when you take out that weight. That's one of those four corners that's building weight right here. You could then go in, add layers if you wanted to, cut all this off. She has a lot of weight. Like this mannequin is actually not bad. Usually they're pretty thin. So she could benefit from a lot of a layering going on right here. Not necessarily like a stack or graduation, but something to get rid of this bulk, this weight right here. And we could do something very minimal to kind of lessen that up. We'll get into all that, adding in layers, refining precision hair cutting. Once we learn the basic shapes, so you have to kind of learn the rules before you start breaking them. But this is your first basic shape. You can do this any length. Keep it long, medium, or short. If someone just wanted to trim, like this haircut is actually pretty popular right now, this very blunt zero degree bob. Children's haircuts also, if you're just doing a trim all over, 
it's gonna be probably this. But anyway, once it's dry, this is where you can go in and start refining the cut. Are there any stragglers, stragglers, straggly hairs? What's going on? Take a look, whoop. Then you can go through and style this and do some finish work. But you don't wanna style it until you've checked it. You don't wanna send your client home unless you're sure it's good. We don't ever want them to shampoo their hair and try to recreate the style and it look completely different and be different lengths, layers everywhere. We wanna make sure that they're happy with this. Are you happy? So that is our zero degree, also called a blunt cut, also called a square one length cut. Next week, I'm working on my other series, but the next week, so two Sundays from now, we are going to be doing a graduated haircut, which is really fun. The short going to long stack in the back. So we're gonna create another basic shape, a triangular basic shape, shape, and we're gonna add 45 degree or triangle layers in the back. So that's gonna be exciting. So make sure you join me for that. But until then, I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you next time for something cool. Something cool.